All right, let's stand together this morning, take your Bible and go to the book of Exodus with me, please. The book of Exodus chapter number 13 today. Also, if you would, I want you to go ahead and go to Exodus 13, and I want you to keep your place there. But then also, if you, love, if you would, I want you to turn with me to the book of Joshua, and I want you to look at Joshua chapter 3. So if you could just go ahead and find both of those places in the Word of God. Exodus chapter number 17, and then I want you to look at Joshua chapter uh, number 3 with me. And uh, I want to uh, use both of these passages for the message today and uh, asking the Lord to help us and speak to our heart uh, during the service today. Exodus chapter number 13 is where we're going to begin. And if you would, I want you to look at verse number 17. Exodus 13, verse number 17 today. And we'll read a few verses here from the Word of God. The Bible says, And it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, Lest peradventure the people repent when, uh, when they see war, and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about, and through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, the children of Israel went up, harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones away hence with you. The Bible goes on to say, look at verse number 21. The Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Now, if you would, I want you to go to chapter 14 of the book of Exodus, and I want to begin reading there uh, in this passage in verse 13. The Bible says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you today. Uh, for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. The Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now go over with me to the book of Joshua, if you would, just a moment. And I want you to look with me at Joshua chapter number 3. And as we look at Joshua chapter number 3, I want to begin reading around verse number 8. Joshua chapter 3, verse number 8. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When you are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, you shall stand still in Jordan. Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you. And he gives the names there of those the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Parasites, uh, Gergesites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the people passed over before Jordan. Now, the Bible says, verse 12, Now therefore take you twelve men of the tribes of Israel, out of every man a tribe. It shall come to pass, as soon as the souls of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. It shall come to pass, when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people, and as they that bear the ark were coming to Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. Of course, you know that later on, and we'll get to this, God instructed them to put those stones as a memorial of when God led them across the Red or the Jordan uh, River. 
I want to preach this morning from these two passages, and I'll share with you just a moment what I'm going to be preaching, but I trust the Lord to help us today. Let's bow together in prayer. Father, thank you so much this morning for the opportunity we have to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you, God, today for the privilege that we have had to enjoy the good singing and the good fellowship. And Lord, I pray today that you'll speak to our heart through the Word of God. And Lord, I pray today that you'll give us what we need from your Word. We'll thank you for what you do. In Christ's name we pray. And you can be seated. I want you to notice, if you would, that I have just read in the Bible two crossings in the Word of God. Two different crossings in God's Word uh, here that we are very familiar with. The first crossing we know as the Red Sea. The second crossing we know is the Jordan River. In our text in both of these passages, the people of God are delivered and they are brought across the Red Sea. But this morning, with the help of the Lord, I want to look at those things and I want to preach on this thought. If He brings you to it, He will lead you through it. If He brings you to it, He will lead you through it. God's people needed God to show up in their life. They needed God to do great things for them as God had led them out of bondage. Can we think how many times in our life that we have been bewildered on the shore? How many times in our life has God brought us to a place in our life that we are waiting on the Lord to move and to do the next thing and for the Lord to work in our life? Now, I want you to notice some interesting things today about the two passages that I've read. And I hope that they'll help you this morning. The Bible says in the book of Esther, chapter 4 and verse 14, that Esther was brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. Other words, I want you to understand today that God, that God uh, had brought the people of God to the Red Sea and the people of God to the Jordan uh, and He brought them there for a time such as this. Why is that so important? Well, I want you to know Notice some things about the steps of the people of God. I want you to notice today that Israel had come up out of bondage, had been set free from sin, had been delivered by God uh, through the blood that was applied, and Moses had led them uh, to the banks of the Red Sea. But Moses did not lead them in the way that Moses most likely would have went and the direction that he would have gone. Also, I want you to notice this. I want you to notice that the Jordan was the same thing. Once God was done with Moses and Moses is off the scene, uh, then God uses uh, Joshua to lead the people of God and to deliver them across the Jordan. And it's very interesting today to notice that God was in control the entire time of leading the people of God. Brother Zach, get me a little air flowing in here. I want you to notice, if you would, several things today in the Word of God that let us know uh, that God had led them. First of all, I want you to notice that the people of God had ordered steps. They had ordered steps. You say, preacher, what do you mean by that? Here's what I mean by that. What I mean by that in the Word of God is this, is that the people of God were being led by God as God wanted them to go, and it was no accident that God brought them to the place that He did. I want you to notice this. Think about it. Did God know the Red Sea would be there? Did God know when He led Israel? And He did not lead Israel uh, the easy way, the short way. Uh, There would have been some battles that way. But God led them a certain way. They were ordered steps in the life of the people of God. Hey, do you believe God knew that the Red Sea was there? Well, can I tell you this? Absolutely God knew that they would come to the Red Sea. Let me ask you this. Do you believe uh, that God knew uh, that the joy 
Jordan would be there and it would be flood season and that God would be leading them uh, to the Jordan in flood season at the time they were getting there. Absolutely God knew that. So you say, preacher, what are you saying? Here's what I'm saying. They are ordered steps. If God brings you to it, uh, God will bring you through it. If God leads you to the Red Sea, if God leads you to the Jordan, uh, then God will bring you through it and across it if you're in His will of your life. Amen. Amen. So you think about the ordered steps when God delivered the people of God. Here's what the psalmist said about that. Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Notice the Bible does not say that the steps of a sinful man are the steps of a sorry man. But the Bible said the steps of a good man. Here's a good man. Job said it like this. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Say, preacher, what are you trying to say? Here's what I want to say today. If you are letting God lead your life, and you are letting God direct your life, and you are following the steps that God wants you to go to, sometimes you're going to come to a Red Sea. Sometimes Sometimes you're going to come to a Jordan in the flood season. Sometimes in your life you're going to get to something that's going to seem like you can't get through it and you can't get over it. But I want to say this to you today. If God led you to it, God will lead you through it. If God brought you there, then God will take you through it. He'll take you through it because why? He brought you to it. Amen. Amen. Let me say this to you today. Some people come to places that God didn't lead them to. Now don't blame that on God. That's not God's fault. If your life's a mess and you've got your life in a mess and you got it in a mess because it's the way you wanted to go instead of the way God wanted you to go, then that's your mess, not God's mess. Amen? I want you to understand that. I'm telling you this, we got a whole lot of people that said I do when they should have said I don't. We got a whole lot of people that live their lives and live their lives the way they want to. They walk the steps they want to. But friend, I'm telling you, the only way that we're ever going to be what we need to be for God is to get in the will of God for our lives and to walk in the will of God. Hey, but if He leads you to it, He will lead you through it. Amen. They're ordered steps. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. What you need to do in your life is find out what God wants you to do and follow in those steps. And sometimes when you follow in those steps, yes, they're going to come to a Red Sea. Yes, they're going to come to a Jordan overflowing his banks. It's not all going to be easy. Amen. It's not all going to be roses and hunky dory. And I, I don't care what all these feel-good people of our day say. And everybody wants to go to the feel-good places. Can I tell you this? It's not always going to feel good. Sometimes there are going to be battles. Sometimes there are going to be fights. Sometimes there are going to be heartaches. There are going to be times you're going to come to the banks of a Red Sea and you're going to think, Lord, why did you lead me here? God, why am I here? What am I doing at the banks of a Red Sea? Lord, why do I have this problem? Why am I dealing with this cancer? Why am I dealing with this sickness? Why am I dealing with this crisis? Lord, you're my Father. You know where I'm at in my life. You know what I'm doing in my life. Lord, why am I at this place? I want to say to you today again emphatically, God would not lead you to it if God wasn't going to lead you through it. God would not lead you to it if He wasn't going to lead you through it. Now, I didn't say, I said God led you to it. You this morning know very well if God leads you to something in your life or not or you chose to do it. Just don't blame it on the Lord. Amen. Just don't blame it on the Lord. Let me just say this today. They are ordered steps. Second of all, Lord, when God gave me this thought, I just, in my spirit, just rejoiced. But they are omnipresent steps. Let me explain that. There are many attributes of God in the Bible. 
There's all God's omniscience. He is everywhere. There's God's omnipotence. He is all powerful. But there also is God's omnipresence. And you say, preacher, what do you mean by that? Here's the simple fact. If God leads you to the bank of the Red Sea, if God leads you to the Jordan, and then He opens up the waters, if He opens up the waters and you step into the Red Sea, or you step into the Jordan, I want to say something to you. You, you won't have to walk it alone. You won't have to go across the Red Sea alone. You won't have to go across the Jordan alone. You know why? Because our omnipresent God said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you and I will be with you every step of the way. And can I tell you this? After serving God 38 years of my life, I'm not always being what I ought to be, but God has always been what He is. And He's always been there in the midnight hour uh, across in the Red Sea going through Jordan's stormy waters. I'm glad the Lord is omnipresent. Amen. 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 I'm glad the Lord is there. The Bible says in Hebrews, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You know why he added that at the end of that verse? He added that because too many people covet things of other people and they're never satisfied. But if they have the Lord with them, your life can be satisfied and your life can be happy and you don't have to live a life of misery. Uh, It ain't the things. It's about the Lord's presence in your life. Friend, I'd rather have God's presence than Trump's money. I'd rather have God's presence uh, than the wealth of this world. I'd rather have God in my life and what walking in my life and around me in my life than anything else in the world. I'm glad if God brings me to it, He'll lead me through it. But if He does, He'll go with me. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy 31.6 says this. 31.6, that wasn't tongues. 31.6 says this. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, He it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I'm the present steps. More than I need Miss Wendy at the Red Sea, I need God. More than I need this church at the Red Sea or the Jordan, I need God. More than anything else, I need God. More than anything else, you need God. And if you're trying to do right, and you're trying to live right, and you're trying to follow the will of God in your life, and you're trying to do what's right, the presence of God will be real in your life. And you can count on it that He'll be there with you even in the middle of it. Amen. How many would agree with that today? I believe it's right. They're ordered steps. They're also omnipresent steps. Then I want you to see thirdly, and these are just some things God put on my heart the other day, sitting down in my home and just really thought about. They are opportunity steps. Amen. They're opportunity right. steps. I want you to think about something with me just a moment. The Bible says that Joshua comes to the banks of the Jordan. The Bible says that Moses comes to the banks of the Red Sea. Both of them were God's men. Both of them were following God. The people were following God's men as they followed God. By the way, that's still right to do. You follow God's men as they follow God, not as they follow other stuff, but as they follow God. But I want you to notice this. When God brought Israel to the Jordan with Joshua, Jordan was in his flood banks. Jordan was overflowing. It wasn't just the Jordan to cross, but it was Jordan overflowing. It was a dangerous Jordan. It was a high water Jordan. It was a Jordan River uh, that was going to be difficult to get even close to its banks. But guess what? God already knew that they were going to be crossing it when it was overflowing. God already knew it was in the flood stage. You say, preacher, why would He lead them to it when it's in the flood stage? Why would He lead them to it uh, when it's like that? Because it is an opportunity. It is an opportunity of what? It's an opportunity for God to show who God God really is. It's an opportunity for God to show what God can really do and what He can do in your life and my life. Friend, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. 
Amen. You see, God was with Moses. Now Joshua gets his big test. And God said, now Joshua, you ain't going to get out on it easy. I'm going to put you to Jordan in the flood stage. Just like Elijah with them prophets of Baal. They got done cutting themselves and they couldn't get through God to do anything. You know, Elijah said, he said, take a whole bunch of water, dump it on the sacrifice. Why would you do that? Because God's going to show you, I not only take care of the sacrifice, that fire will lick up the water. Amen. Can I tell you this? When you come to things in your life and God allows you to get to those places and God allows you to be standing there at the banks of that sea or at the banks of that river, friend, it is an opportunity in your life to be able to do something for God and see God's omnipotent power work in your life. By the way, you can't always put God down on paper and pencil. You can't always plan him out that way. When God sent them across the Jordan, he led them during that flood season. Listen, when it's not easy, it has to be God. You've got to follow God. Now, that doesn't mean junk you've led yourself into. You've made a mess of it. That's your fault. That's my fault. I've done some things in my life. Listen, God didn't get me. God got me out of a few, but God didn't get me in them. Brother Chris got in them. God got me out of a few. Amen? But I will tell you this, I've never had anything in my life that God led me to that God didn't lead me through. I've never had somebody, listen now, I'm trying to help you, I'm telling you, if God leads you to the banks of the Jordan, even in the flood season, if He brought you there, He will take you through it. You can count on that. Amen. Opportunity. It's not just opportunity for God to do something, but it's opportunity for you to see what you're made of at the crossing. It's an opportunity in your life to see what you're made of. Boy, haven't we lived in trying times where we're kind of finding out what we're made of. We're living in times, listen, we're living in times where the world's shooting at us, the devil's shooting at the church, shooting at the Bible, shooting the Word of God. We're, we're living in a day and time today where people are bewildered, where people are, 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 are listen, I'm telling you, I don't know what's going to happen to America in about another month or so from now. I'll be honest, I don't know. I will tell you this though, God already has a plan. God is in control. God knows where we're at. You know what I've decided? I've decided that I'm not going to put my trust in a man in a White House. I'm not going to put my trust in a Congress and a Senate. I'm not going to put my trust in a feeling, but I'm going to put my trust in the fact that God said if I lead you to it, I'll lead you through it, and I'll take care of you. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand opportunity steps sometimes God gives you the opportunity to see what you're made of I find myself a whole lot of times when that happens going to the Lord and saying something like this here I am again God help me get this opportunity right (laughs) you ever been there All right, Lord here I am Jordan's waters are flowing I'm in over my head but you brought me here now again don't blame things on God, it's not God. Don't blame things on God, it's not God. Why would God let this happen to me? Won't you just be totally honest? The reason you're in the mess you're in is not God's fault. Amen. You, can get, you can get in tough situations when it is God's fault. That's like when you have the Red Sea in the Jordan. Amen. But listen, you know, you, know, you know very well in your life what brought you to where you are. You know very well in your life what circumstance, what situation, what decision brought you to where you are. You know that very well. Nobody has to tell you that. You know that. So what I want to say today is this is opportunity steps. And then I want you to see fourthly, if you will, with me just a moment. Not only is it opportunity steps, but I want you to see that this is ovation steps. You say, preacher, what do you mean ovation? Well, let me read it to you. Joshua 4, 7. Then you shall answer them. The waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Answer them about what? Listen. When they passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off. And these stones, you remember the stones they placed? 
And these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. Why? So no one could forget what God did for them. So no one could forget that God brought them to the Jordan in the flood stage. That God brought them to the Red Sea. And God delivered them. And you know what Joshua said? When people see these stones, it is praise. It is worship. It is ovation of what God did. And friend, if God did it for them, and God did it for Moses and God did it for Joshua then God can do it for you and I because he is a saint yesterday today and forevermore ovation steps you know what ovation steps are they're the testimony of getting through it the testimony of getting through it giving God the praise giving God the glory ovation steps how many of you right now can take a look Well, hallelujah. You can take a look back over your shoulder at some places God's led you to in your life. And you can take a look back over your shoulder and you can see how God was with you every step of the way. You can see how God took care of you in the middle of it all. You can see how God met your needs and how God answered prayer. Hey, sometimes going through it, you may not be able to see all of that. It might be clouded a little bit by everything you're going through. But friend, you can look back over your shoulder this morning and you can find that God was there every step of the way. He met the need. He answered the prayer. If He led you through it, He'll take you through it. Say amen. I believe that, don't you? I'll give you this final thing. I'm done. You also find there are other side steps. I mean, if you're going to step on one side of Jordan and one side of the Red Sea and God's going to get you through it, then eventually one day you're going to step on the other side. Wonder what it must have been like for the Israelite to cross the Jordan to be the first one that had a footprint on the other side. What about the first old boy that stepped out of that water and said, I made it? Amen. 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 What about the first one across Jordan after the priests leave the ark of God? Of course, they were the first ones across and they were following God. And the Bible says, don't move to God moves. Amen. And he said, don't you move to that ark goes in the water and those priests go in the water and you follow God. But let me ask you this. What must it must have been like when they realized we just crossed Jordan in his flood stage and they put their feet on the other side? What I'm trying to say to you today is this. God brought you to it. He'll lead you to it. Amen. Amen. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do what I'm doing. I'd just, you know. Amen. Why? Because God leads me to a whole lot of things in my life. Sometimes they're uncomfortable things. Sometimes God leads me to stuff, and I'm thinking, Lord, what are you doing? You know, what, what, what where's this going? And God will just say, "What Moses stand still, right. Amen. and see the salvation of the Lord." Amen. He'll say, learn to trust me. Learn to depend on me. Right. He, listen, I, I want to give you, Brother James knows all the words to this, but I obviously am not going to sing them because y'all laugh and I don't want you laughing at me today. But I want to give you the words of this song. It was in my heart that I put in my notes when I finished this message. Hear the words. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. By his own hand, he leadeth me. His faithful follower, I would be. For by his hand, he leadeth me. Can I tell you this? There is no pope over you. There is no preacher that can make you do stuff. You're going to do exactly what you want to do. I've been accused lately, he's like a god over people. You've got to be kidding me. People don't listen to me. I told my wife, that's the funniest thing in the world. Somebody would think people listen to me. I'm being honest. You go tell people things to do in your office, they go do the opposite. I just tell them, and my heart's clear with God, and you're going to make a mess of it, I'll try to scrape it up with you. That's just the truth. 
You don't need to follow a man. You need to follow God. And I will say this. Most people in church, they are not capable of following God. Most people are case, capable of gossip, backbiting. Most people are capable of a lot of stuff. But following God involves prayer, spending time alone with Him, seeking the will of God for your life. If He brings you to it, He'll lead you through it. How many of you know that to be true? Amen. Amen. I'm telling you. I love Calvary Baptist Church some days. I really do. And let me tell you this. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I'm not depending on you to lead me through nothing. You're not the one that's going to get me through life. You can be here today and gone tomorrow. You can love me today and wouldn't put me out if I was on fire tomorrow. That's the truth. That's the ministry. I've been in it a long time. There are no friends in the ministry. But I'm going to tell you this, and I want you to understand this. What's leading us in our lives is not that we're following people, but we're following God and the steps He has ordered for our life. That's what we're doing. Where is He leading you today? What's He doing in your life? And I ain't talking about a fuzzy feeling or you ate something too late. I'm talking about have you sought God about it? Are you trusting God about it? Let me ask you a question. I just glanced back and saw Brother Barry sitting in the back. You think God knew that Brother Barry would get hit by that vehicle before it happened? You say, well, that was probably maybe Brother Barry's fault, that other guy's fault. I agree with that. But God knew it. I got a family that's not here today because they got a son that's way, way wayward. This discouraged them completely. You think God knew that would happen in their life? Would God want them in the middle of the sea or would God want them throwing in the towel? You think about today where you are? You say, well, I just don't feel spiritually like I used to. God hasn't moved. You, you, you can't say God has moved because He hasn't. He's the same. He's always been. So if God hadn't moved, who has? Well, it just don't bless me no more. That's not God's fault. Well, that choir just don't touch me no more. That song just don't, you know, I don't get happy feet. There's a gospel song called Happy Feet. It's contemporary and probably good to listen to if you're riding a trainer or Jogging don't have no spiritual value, but people want happy feet. They want things in church to make them dance. That's the will of God. The will of God's finding it and doing it. Amen. And then when it gets tough, let Him lead you through it. Amen. Christian life's not a playground, it's a battlefield. Wimps need not apply. That's what's wrong with America right now. Got the first non wimp in the White House. He might be a lot of things. He ain't scared. Watch next week. Nancy about to have a heart attack. Where are you at today? Where are you at today? But we're on the shore. Walking through the middle of it with God. Seeking His will for your life. Well, preacher, if God loved me, I wouldn't be going through what I'm going through. What if you made the mess? You ever thought about that? How much mess have you made in your life you know you made it? I don't know about you, but I got my list. <laughs> Amen. I've got my list. But I'll tell you this, I've never had anywhere where God led me that if I did right, He wouldn't get me through it. You might be going through something in your life today. Brother James, y'all can come. You might be going through something in your life today. 
And you say, man, how am I going to get through this? How am I going to get through this? Same way you've got through everything else. Trust God. Amen. Let God lead you. Don't get ahead of the Lord. Amen. What did he say to them? He simply said to them, don't you go trying to go through the Red Sea or the Jordan before the ark moves. Don't try to move before Amen. God moves. You look, read the passage. Joshua said, the first thing that's going to go into the Jordan is those priests in that Ark of the Covenant. Don't you get ahead of God. Amen. How many times can I speak for me personally if we got ahead of God? Amen. I try not to do things when it's feelings in my life. I try not to because some of you know, you can get sideways, you can get hurt, you can get mad. And when you do stuff like that, sometimes you make decisions and they're just shoestring decisions real quick. But if you'd have waited on God and trusted God, it went different. Am I helping anybody? Amen. 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 Your number one obligation, stand on your feet, your number one obligation in your life is to follow God, serve Him, and if you need His help, during the middle of it, ask Him for help. 